We are now going to take a special look at how the five-year-old war in Iraq has affected the country's culture. Hadani Ditmars is joining us to talk about that from Los Angeles. She's a journalist and author of Dancing in the No-Fly Zone, A Woman's Journey Through Iraq. Hadani, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so you visited Iraq before the war and then you went after the war. What was the most, uh, the most striking thing that you saw about how culture has been affected by the war? Well, sadly, the secular culture that survived the worst excesses of Saddam and sanctions did not survive the invasion, Relitsa. Um, a lot of my friends and contacts were um, playwrights, the cellist in the Baghdad Philharmonic, artists who were exhibiting at the, the hundreds of galleries that opened in Baghdad at the end of the 90s, beginning of the 2000s. Um, when I went back uh, in 2003, uh, October, instead of this sort of new liberation and freedom from censorship, in fact, what I found was a new kind of fear and a new kind of self-censorship. Um, and when you when say fear, what was the fear of? I wanted to show here uh, uh, a dance that you were able to perform, Makam, which is a yes. traditional love poetry dance that, that you say your friends are saying that they fear performing it anymore at weddings. We'd like to show a clip of, of you dancing. I was dying <laughs> to see that. <laughs> Well, my book is called Dancing in the No-Fly Zone, but actually um, this um, the video that I shot um, of these wonderful Makam performers. There you um, are. <laughs> they asked me to dance. But seriously, um, this, this cannot be performed anymore. Why? Well, not in public, um, because there's been this terrible combination of criminal anarchy and de facto fundamentalism and Islamic militias that has replaced what was a police state, but what was a secular police state, where there were, you know, live performances going on all the time, and where women had a very strong role in public life. Uh, since the invasion and since the rewriting of the Constitution along sectarian lines and the addition of regressive Sharia law into a Constitution that had had one of the most liberal family laws in, in the Arab world, um, things have, have changed dramatically. Uh, the cultural, um, you know, the, the cultural world has gone into exile. Um, and and let's are, talk a little bit about, about that. You, you mentioned uh, the cellist who had become an and, uh, and uh, a militant. Tell us about Kareem, that's his oh, name. Oh, well, I don't think he became a militant, but um, Kareem was a very talented young cellist who played in the Philharmonic. Uh, and when I last had contact with him, he had found work for a security firm, um, which is really kind of a euphemism for one of the many sort of mercenary operations in Iraq. So to me, the transition from principal cellist in the Baghdad Philharmonic to mer mercenary really speaks to the whole tragedy of what's happened generally to culture in Iraq. And is the Iraqi National Orchestra performing now? Well, I have heard that they have had some furtive post-invasion performances, but only in the fortress of the Green Zone. The footage that I have, which I think you're going to show, is um, really rare footage of one of the very few public uh, public rehearsals, rather, of, of the Iraqi National Orchestra in, in, in a public place, in a theater, um, in Adamiya. It was under armed guard, of course, which you never had before. The, the, the orchestra, shortly after this, started receiving death threats. Um, the story of the orchestra is very sad, actually, because they, they struggled under sanctions in Saddam only to face uh, chaos and power vacuum and sort of this it, introduction of fundamentalist culture post-invasion. You, you also have a clip about the Mutanabi Street book market, a very special place. And I remember the report from last year where a, a coffee shop around mm -hmm. uh, that place uh, mm -hmm, was bombed. Mm -hmm. And that's where the elite of Iraq got together to discuss uh, poetry. <laughs> and uh, tell us about that place. Well, I don't know if they were the elite. I mean. Under sanctions, I used to visit Al Mutanabi Street uh, and the, the old book market, and I used to see old professors and writers tearfully selling off their volumes of Walt Whitman and 
and Najib Mahfouz and Shakespeare to pay for basics like food and medicine. Uh, Post-invasion, I visited the, the Mutanabi Street, and you did see briefly there were some books that had been banned under the old regime, but soon um, the power vacuum and, and the fear factor took over, and last year, in, in March of 2007, sadly, the old Poets Cafe on Mutanabi Street, where writers and intellectuals used to come to discuss literature and politics, it was actually blown up. But this is symbolic of uh, a real full-scale assault on any kind of public intellectual life in Iraq. You have to remember that hundreds of academics have been deliberately targeted by death squads since the, since the invasion. Um, anyone who's outspoken politically in any way, uh, whether they're an artist or a journalist or a writer, uh, is targeted 